Welcome back. We are now joined by Professors Christina Ta and Alonzo Smith and by Associate Dean of the Humanities at Montgomery College, Rodney Redmond, all of whom were panelists at the Racism, Discrimination, and Cultural Awareness Forums that were held on the campuses of Montgomery College in recent months, all based on discussions of what is going on in America today. And I want to thank all of you for joining us for this segment. And uh, Alonzo, I want to start with you for a moment because I want to talk a little bit about what I thought was fascinating is the way, rather than just uh, get right into current day issues, students that came to these forums were get, given a, a sense of history about some of the issues they needed to understand about race relations today. And I know you were able to bring that perspective. What, what did you want the students to know going into these discussions? Well, the issue of race in America is um, very fluid. It's changed a great deal, in, even in the past 50 years, not to mention the past 100 years. And so many of the ways in, even in which we define race are continually changing. The census itself, mm -hmm. the categories in the census change from every 10 years. They're never, they're never the same. So race is a very dynamic uh, concept, and yet it is a, an extraordinarily powerful concept that is a matter of literally life and death. Can you say a little bit more uh, about uh, just the comparison? That is, we, we've been hearing about all of these issues lately. Are, are things worse than before or better than before? Are we more aware? Does the media play a role? Those are questions that really depend to a great extent on how you look at it. Um, you know, about five years ago, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of Brown first support of education. There were a lot of sort of nationally discussed questions of how far have we come? What does civil rights mean? And I think one of the things that came out of that was that in 1954, the issue of race and civil rights was looked on as an issue of white and black people sitting in classrooms in the South. Today, when we talk about race and diversity and civil rights, we think of Hispanic people, we think of Asian people, we think of Arabic people, we think of Native American people, we think of gender issues, we think of gay rights issues, we think of a whole wide range of issues, and it's no longer a Southern question. Mm. It's no longer a question of kids sitting in classroom together. So it's become a lot more complex. Christiana, you brought some of the perspectives mm. from, from a sociology standpoint. Again, setting the tone for these good discussions that were held on the campuses by so that students got a chance to give their voice to the issue. But uh, talk about the perspective you, you wanted to bring as a sociologist. Uh, yeah, as uh, Alonso correctly said, that race is a social construct uh, and that the definition of race in this country has actually changed over the last 50 or 60 years. Uh, there were people, for example, from southern Italy and some of the other Mediterranean areas that they consider non-white in the past in this country and today they are considered white. So it's actually something that is defined by the society uh, that you're in. And there was a time in the past when the emphasis was just on black and white. And now we have all the diverse groups in the society. And I think the more diverse the society gets, the, the, the more the dynamics, the social dynamics change. And what we do, we are responding to the new social dynamics that we have. Because now blacks don't only have to deal with uh, discrimination from whites, but blacks even experience discrimination from other minority groups. Mm -hmm. We have other immigrants in the country, and I think it's a spillover of the white uh, prejudice and, and discrimination. And so blacks have found it necessary to respond differently. I think the other thing also in the African-American community is that the more educated African-Americans are more educated uh, than we used to be in the past. So we understand the issues more. We understand exactly how to deal with the issues, how to fight, I mean, uh, um, how to actually pursue the correction or, or, or to pursue resolution to some of the issues. In the past, someone else had to advocate for blacks. And now, because you have a growing number of, of, of blacks in the country, we're in a better position to advocate, you know, for our rights to, to put pressure on society to move in a different direction as far our, as our rights are concerned. And the other uh, uh, statement I made just before we came on air was that I think one of the problems is that we haven't been willing to talk about this issue in the past. We keep everything bottled up. People do want to talk. And I think talking about the issue does, you know, help us to move in the right direction. 
in terms of a resolution. Um, speaking of talking, Dean Redmond, you have uh, a different perspective being in the dean's office. And I'm wondering how um, teachers, professors, what other programs, uh, how people are talking about these issues or if they're bringing them into the classroom. Um, I think that the issues are coming into the classroom. Uh, as uh, Brian said from the previous segment of the show, um, the students are starting to have those conversations. And some of those conversations are being facilitated by the professors in the classroom. And I'll use um, some of the English classes as an example, whether they be literature courses or composition courses, uh, including our developmental composition mm -hmm. courses. We, I frequently have conversations with faculty, with students who are engaged in those courses where they are talking about issues of gender, issues of uh, culture, issues of um, ethnicity, issues of religion. All of those kinds of things in, in any part of a social construct or a social institution where people can be discriminated against and have been discriminated against are coming into the classroom. Um, one of the textbooks, I just received an email from one of the English professors. Um, we're talking about textbooks mm -hmm. for her uh, composition course for the next semester. And the textbook that she's chosen is uh, titled Issues of Gender. Mm -hmm. uh, and having taught that textbook for a number of semesters, um, that textbook covers a range of issues that are that generally center around gender, but they also include issues of culture and issues of ethnicity and of religion and of race, um, starting from the very first essay in the text focusing on the traditional construct of, of a nuclear family of mom, dad, and the 2.5 mm -hmm. children in the white picket fence, moving all the way to the more, uh, some of the other ends of that spectrum uh, where there are arranged marriages uh, and some, in some of those situations where uh, one party really didn't want to be married, but because that was a part of the culture, they could not reject the arrangement mm -hmm. because there was a cultural uh, statement that was being made when you chose to reject that person that the parents or whoever was making the arrangement uh, chose. So those things are coming into the classroom and students are writing about them, students are researching them. Um, they're having classroom discussions. When I visit classrooms, I'm he hearing the students talk about both their experiences as well as what they envision should happen or would happen mm -hmm. 5, 10, or 15 years from now, what they envision our society will be. Mm -hmm. Alonzo, I want to talk about uh, the mm -hmm. types of incidents that can, you know, turn a corner or shape history in mean, one direction or another. What, you know, what are those defining moments? You talked about Brown versus Board of Education and students, right. you know, think about I, I read about that in a history book and mm -hmm. I learned about that. Yeah. But, uh, today they're very affected by what they see in the media and it may be incidents that are happening today or in recent years. Uh, can you talk about some of the, the things that students ha might be relating to in, in our more recent memory and how they might actually have a place in history on the issue of race relations? Well, let's take three for example. One is the case that involved the University of Michigan that had to do with affirmative action and higher education. The second one has to do with the Jena 6 incident down in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess we could say the third one would be John Dianimus and the statements that he made. Now all of these mobilize people. Uh, they become subjects of national discussion. They're defining moments in many ways because people come together, uh, lead, civil rights leaders have something to say, and they serve as kind of uh, touchstones to tell us where we are and to see how we evaluate. But those are negative defining moments. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, when you see uh, an African American whose father is a Kenyan immigrant running for president of the United States and now is almost the front runner in the presidential race for president of the most powerful country in the world, that's a defining moment too. So, you know, all of these things that come through the media uh, help to kind of tell us where we are, where we've been, where we're going. 